Hey guys, I have my charka and I'm on the floor. I really, um, I like to spin with my charka on the floor and I'm gonna try to get my angle really good here. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of do it while I'm talking to you. So after spinning my cotton a little bit, I kind of came to the conclusion that these punies were not actually good. They don't, see, you see what's happening here? I'm trying to draft it and I'm really having like that, that was me trying to draft it at first. So now that I've kind of gotten through it, you shouldn't have to do something like this to get your punies or your Rolex or what have you to draft. Um, and I don't think that they were rolled this way. I really think that they were just far too compacted in storage. Um, <clears throat> Another thing is, is that the plant matter, at first I was like, oh wow, they look so organic. And now I'm like, this is a bitch to pull out of my yarn while I'm trying to make it. Like, I actually gave up on trying to do that. So, yep, not gonna buy from them again. Um, and I'm not gonna talk bad about anybody, so if you really wanna try to figure out who it was I bought it from, you can check out the Fiber Haul video. Um, so before I get into the charka and all of this, because this is more of like an introductory video, um, I'm going to do another one with me teaching you how to spin. But this right here, there's there's a yarn here that goes around my, this is my, this is what gives me my ratio. So, and this is my big wheel. So you're... So you're going to put this thread all the way over here. Now, whenever you are done spinning, you're going to take this thread and you're going to pull it off because you don't want this to get saggy. You don't want it to lose its tension, right? So whenever you go to spin, put it on. When you're done, you got to take it off. Now, I actually had to go and buy more waxed linen thread because Bradley decided he really likes to chew on my charka. So he completely chewed my other thread that came with it and I had to go on Amazon and find waxed linen thread. I like this one because it came in three different colors. It was decently priced and it was prime because I wanted it fucking ASAP. I haven't been able to use my charka in two days. So whenever I got it in yesterday, I immediately <laughs> Put it on and basically whenever you have to replace this part of the charka it's it's not so difficult I'm just gonna rotate this around until you can see my string with the knot on it move that box so you can see the string with the knot on it right here this is just a square knot it's two overhand knots and I just tied it very very tightly so and since I'm using mostly um, I'll get into the tensioning here with you as well. So you can see that this divot right here that my um, tensioner is currently in, this is the deepest divot right here. This one's a little bit in the middle and this one is very shallow. So this will give you a different spinning ratio. Basically your spinning ratio is how many times you have to turn this big wheel. So one of these turns of the big wheel has a certain number of turns on your quill. So whenever I put it on the really shallow setting, I get 12 turns of the quill per every one turn of the wheel. This middle one gives me 14 turns of the quill, and this last one gives me 16. So 12, 14, 16. That might not sound like a really big difference, but <clears throat> set this down and just really let you get like a bird's eye view of this whole system. <clears throat> when you're spinning your yarn, you are spinning this wheel quite a lot of times. So 16 doesn't sound like a lot when you just turn it exactly one time. When you're sitting here turning it five or six or seven times, that, 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 that two number difference is actually really huge. So, as you can see, I have a full amount of yarn packed onto here. So, this is also kind of like a. I, I want to show you guys like how to unpack your charka and the safe. Um, this is this this is the most I've ever packed my charka ever. 
this is also the first time I've ever bought cotton. So for me, this was super fun and I just need to find where I stopped last night and here it is. Now I'm actually going to use a ball winder, but the first thing you want to do is <clears throat> take your tensioning down. That box is all up in my way. So take your tensioning down, but also take this rope and pull it all the way off. I usually just like to attach it underneath of this piece of wood right here. And then your quill will completely move freely and you can go on to do any of your nose pin stuff, any of that. And um, yeah, I'm actually going to go get my ball winder and do it on my ball winder. Now, when I do it on my ball winder, I will have a hand in between the quill. So like this end will be attached to the ball winder, right? And the ball winder will be going. And I will be winding it with one hand and holding it with this one. So sometimes whenever I'm unwinding my spindle, I'll do it from here, or sometimes I'll do it from here. And sometimes it'll come right off from that angle. Sometimes it won't. If you pack it on this side and you try to pull from this side where it's packed on the other side of this hump, you're going to get snags. Sometimes the snags can actually break your yarn while you're trying to wind it. And that's a pain in the ass no one wants. So I kind of rotate between um, hold it, like, like pulling my yarn off from here and pulling my yarn off from up here here. You kind of have to go with it when you're unwinding it. So, hey guys, so now that I've kind of got this set up, I figure, you know, this would be a really good opportunity for me to give y'all a visual of what I mean. So you can see this is my ball winder. It's my Knit Picks uh, ball winder. And I'm holding this hand parallel to the quill. If I were to follow the line of this quill, this is where I'm holding my hand. I'm tensioning with this hand while I wind with the other. And this is the part I was telling you guys about, where it's going to, like, whenever you start packing yarn onto the back of the hump, it gets a little difficult and your yarn will snag. Okay guys, so my ball of cotton that just came off of this charka was 21 grams. So I would say that my charka, because I probably could have packed it more if I really wanted to, but I find that the more I overload something, the harder it is to unload. So I would say 20 is a safe number for how much my charka can hold. And maybe it'll help you figure out how much your charka can hold. But if mine holds about 20, maybe yours holds about 22. So, yeah, it's hard to imagine that all of that yarn was only 20 grams worth. So, I hope this video helped you. I hope it helped you decide what charka to buy, whether to buy a charka or not, what you're getting yourself into, and bits and bobs to help you along your spinning journey. Stay tuned. The next video is actually going to be on how to spin on a charka, and I will take you through every step. In the meantime, bye bye and happy crafting!